Hey, how's it going everybody? Today what we're going to do is I'm going to go over some simple, quick tips for you guys when it comes to booking hunts. Um, specifically for international, even works here in the United States, I'm going to go over some quick, easy tips for you guys to make sure you're booking with the correct outfitters, doing your homework, due diligence, and making sure that you're spending your money where you're most likely going to have the best time of your life. Don't get me wrong, folks, sometimes you do all your due diligence and sometimes you will have a, a shitty trip, you will have a bad outfitter, but these are some tips that will help you, for the most part, stay away from that. So these are the few things that I look for when booking an international hunt or any hunt period. So first off, number one. What I look for first off and foremost is the staff. Are you gonna have fun with these people? Are they likable? Um, are you guys gonna have a relationship and a bond with each other when you're there? A big part of this is when you're booking a hunt, is one, there's a few ways to do it. First off, the best way to do this is go to the trade shows. Go to Safari Club, International, Dallas Safari Club, Grand Slam, Clovis, the Western Hunt Expo. Go to all these convention centers that are gonna have the outfitters from these places you wanna go there. Talk to several of them, or if you have already have a list narrowed down at home, go there and sit down with them, because most of the time, what will happen is you'll sit one-on-one -on -one with the PH or the guide, and uh, you'll be able to build a bond with possibly the person that you're gonna be hunting with. So when you do look at staff, PH or guide. <clears throat> look at those when you're there. Talk to them. Um, you know, Even if you're maybe looking at an international hunt, the PH isn't there per se, but the owner of the operation is sit down with him, Talk a little bit, get a feel for them, see if it's a likable person, if someone you want to spend your money with and book a hunt with. So look at staff. And then next up is when you go through like references or looking at their website, looking at all that, we'll have this. Number two, location slash area. This can mean a lot of different things. When it comes to booking, looking at location area is if you're looking at a place that you're going to hunt mule deer here in the lower 48, um, that it's maybe a over-the-counter tag, landlord tag, or you've got enough points to draw the unit. Usually if you have got enough points, you know the area is good if you waited X amount of years for it. But if you're looking at buying like a private land tag, is look at location. See how big the area is. Ask how many acres it is. Or you know, if you're in Africa, ask how many hectare, hectares it is and then turn it into acres. You want a big area. You don't want to have a small area. You want to have a lot of room to work with. Um, you want to have a lot of room to, so that way you have more animals. You're gonna have more animals with more room, most likely. That's for another step later on. But look at the area, see if it's a big area, see if the area, if there's photos of there, if it looks like a spot that you want to go. If, it, if you're wanting to hunt a big mule deer, but you want to hunt in the mountains, you shouldn't be looking at an area that's just desert sagebrush because that's still not going to fit your cup of tea for what kind of hunt you want to go on. If you want to go to Africa and you want to have rolling hills or more savanna, look at the area, ask for videos and photos of the area. Number three, lodging. If I could learn how to spell lodging correctly. Lodging. So look at the lodging accommodations. Um, whether it's a tented camp or a full five-star lodge, look at it. See what your expectations are. Sometimes your expectations when you're going on a backcountry hunt, you want to just make sure it's a nice tented camp and that the tents are well prepared. You have a nice area to sleep when you come back from a hard day of hunting. If you're looking at a five-star lodge, you want a little bit more luxury. You want to have a nice dining area, a nicer room, uh, maybe your own bathroom and your chandelier um, and all that stuff going on. But what you want to do is make sure the lodging is correct for what you want to do and what suits the hunt. Guys, sometimes you can go on the most amazing backcountry backpack hunt and be sleeping in a shitty tent and still have the best accommodations and still feel comfortable when you're at those. Depends on the hunt. Sometimes you're going to places where you're not going to be that comfortable, but you got to understand that when booking some hunts like going on some mid-Asian Ibex hunts, doing some more hardcore Ibex stuff over in Asia, those most of the time are not going to be that accommodating as far as sleeping arrangements and they're not as fun at camp. It's all about what you're doing there. So according to the accommodations and the experience you're wanting, look at that. Um, so when you're in Africa, um, even a five, even a tented camp in Africa is five stars. They have the best tented camps that you'll ever see. 
They have your own toilet, your own shower, all that in most of these camps, which is super amazing. Um, five star tenant camps, wall tents with some of the best accommodations, elevated platforms, so on and so forth. So just take in mind what you're looking for when it comes to accommodations and lodging and check out the place, see if it ticks the boxes for you and you'll be good. Number four, food. Now, obviously you can see pictures of the food, but you're not gonna know how it tastes. So a big thing is, is call the references. When you call references 99% of the time, it's not gonna be people that did not have a good trip. So take in mind, these people that are on the reference list normally are people that were hand selected that enjoyed their time there. So ask about the food. Um, it depends on if you have allergies or any preferences, ask about stuff that you prefer, ask about your allergy stuff with references. Talk to the outfitter, talk to the guy, talk to the PH about the food, ask questions. You can never ask enough questions when it comes to doing this stuff because you the, the least amount of questions you ask, you can get over there and have a really bad time or be unprepared. If you ask questions ahead of time and are prepared for what you're getting into, you'll be good. So ask about the food. Ask if it tastes good. Ask how often you get it. If you're in a tent camp in Africa, ask if you go, if you're eating in the bush for lunch or they pack a table, all that good stuff, or if you're driving back and forth to camp. Because if you're driving back and forth to camp during the day, that's actually wasting a lot of time that you could be out in the bush. Depends on, you know, obviously back and forth you'll see stuff, but if there's certain things like you're checking baits and stuff for lion and leopard, you want to stay out there as much as possible. So eating in the bush is the best thing. Make sure they're doing that if that's what you want. Same on these backpack hunts. Uh, if you're and doing a sheep hunt or an Asia hunt, talk about the food. The food in Asia most of the time is not that great. Ask if you need to bring stuff or if they will provide stuff for you. I remember showing up to two sheep camps with tons of mountain house. And when I got there, the one place they're like, oh, you didn't need to bring mountain house. They had their own. They brought a bunch of Tupperware boxes in that had a ton of mountain house in them. So I didn't even end up eating on my own. And the other place we had a full on cook at it. And we flew in and rode horses in about an hour and a half and had a, a chef, not a chef, just a cook in camp. And she cooked good food for us. We never even touched mountain house or any of that. So I asked questions, see if you need to bring your own mountain house meals or peak refill, whatever you're eating. Ask ahead of time and check the boxes on that and see what it is. Depends on if you want to rough it or go lodge style. Make sure the food's going to work for you with any conditions you have, like allergies or any preferences and whatnot. Five. <clears throat> I don't know what that weird thing was. Five is quality of game. So this is another big one. Quality of game. All right, sorry, the card got full on us. So we're down to number five, quality of game. So quality of game, this is what I look for. Um, when it comes to quality of game, it's all about your expectations. Do you want to see a lot of animals on your hunt or do you want to see just hunt big, big stuff? Because a lot of times when you go places, you're not going to see a lot of stuff when you're hunting big, big animals when it comes to certain species. Like a lot of the best areas for mule deer, a lot of the best areas for elk, you're not seeing a whole ton of game but when you do see stuff, you're seeing giants or you know potentially big stuff in a lot of areas. Um, a lot of areas that have a lot of numbers of game, um, you're seeing probably a lot more average game throughout the time, which is what I've found going places. Uh, it could be different where you've been, but for me, when you go places, the more game you see, there's gonna be some big ones in there, but the, the, you're not seeing as many big ones throughout the smaller stuff. Quality of game is like if you go to Africa and you go to Tanzania or you go to Zambia, go to some of these wild remote areas. When you go to those places, you're wanting numbers of game because when you're there and you're driving around, you're on a 14 day safari, if you're driving around on day eight and haven't seen jack shit, your, your morale is going to be super low. You're not going to be having as much fun. When you go to those places like Africa, Asia, you want to see a lot of species. Um, sometimes you go to there and you, you know, like especially Asia and you're hunting one, particular species, one particular big animal. A lot of those places don't have an abundancy of animals, but you will, you know, be hunting a big one. Take for instance, Marco Polo sitting here in front of me. Uh, when you're going Marco Polo hunting, especially at the place we went to, we seen 2,000 sheep in one day. Uh, the sheep hunting is not hard in most of those places. It's the travel getting there, that's the thing. So the game is awesome in a lot of those places, especially in Asia and Africa, the game is awesome in, in areas, but you can go to some spots in Africa where it's been mismanaged, mistaken care of, and the game is not that great. You're gonna have a, a really a boring hunt because you'll be driving around, the morale will be low. Um, if, there's, if you're hunting any of the cats and they haven't been pre-baiting, there's not any really cats in that exact 
concession area, but there's some around it. It's just not fun for you because you're spending a lot of time there, not enjoying your hunt because you're not seeing a lot of stuff. Just days in the back of the truck going around or days glassing, um, like in Turkey. First time I went there, I think it was partially timing wise, but I think the area I went to is actually pretty bad um, for a quality of game. We seen like maybe 20 Ibex in 10 days and we the closest we ever got was 800 yards from them and never even saw a really big shooter, um, one that was old enough to shoot. So the quality of game was poor in that area. Then we went back to another area and we seen, heck, we seen probably 20 billies in one day. So a super nice, great area. So it all depends on the game quality. What you're kind of looking for, you gotta have your standards for this, but make sure the quality of game is good. So when you call the references, ask them, well, what'd you see on day one of your safari? How many species do you think you saw in, in a day? Or how many different ibex did you see? Like, depends on where you're going. How many mule deer did you see? How many elk did you see? How many red stags did you see? Was the quality of game good? Ask the reference list that. Also, you know, talk to the outfitter, say, hey, what can you expect to see on a day to day? Um, a guy might say, oh, yeah, I'll expect to see four of the big five in one day, which is, which is possible. But it is also hard and sometimes not believable because that's it's a rare opportunity to see four of the big five in one day. Um, I have done it though in Zambia. I have seen four of the big five free roaming one day though. Barely saw a leopard for just a split second, but it counts. Um, and so quality of game is kind of the final tool to finding the quality of outfit you want to go with. First, you want to go over staff, make sure, also when it comes to staff, you don't want to just make sure the pH and guide are good. You want to make sure the owner's good. You hope the cook's good. You hope like the cleaning people are good, the people that do laundry, the trackers, wherever you're at, you want to make sure they're all good. But start with the pH and guide because if you guys have a good relationship with each other and there's stuff that's slack in the other part, you can convey that with him and it'll fix things a lot easier. If you're not having a good relationship with your pH or guide um, during the hunt or before, if you don't have a good like relationship before the hunt, you're not WhatsApping each other, you don't feel comfortable, when you get there and things are a little bit off, it's gonna be harder to talk and have a good conversation with your pH or guide to clear that up. So talk to him, talk to references again, go to trade shows. Um, hopefully, the best references are your buddies that have been places. Talk to buddies that have been somewhere. Find someone on Instagram that you follow. Chat with them a bunch. Message somebody on Facebook. Talk to people that have been to the places you wanna go and been there multiple times. I can't stress this enough. If someone goes to Africa once, they're on expert on Africa. I've been 13 different times from Zambia, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Namibia, South Africa. I'm not an expert. I have a great amount of knowledge, but I'm not an expert by any means because there's so much stuff that can go on. And the person going one or two times, posting all over Instagram saying, oh, this is where you need to go, this is this. They don't know shit about it because they've only been once and experienced it once. So talk to people that have been in there, been experienced, know what's happening. Follow the skyline, staff, location, lodging, food, quality of game. And I assure you, these are the best ways to stack the odds in your favor for having a great hunt. Hope you guys enjoyed this short video and stay tuned for the next one.